your brother K. Judah, giving our praise to the Most High Yah, and faith in Yahshua HaMashiach, and to my Israelite family worldwide, I say peace and blessings. God used the prophet Ezekiel in many visual illustrations, and some was hard, Israel. So I titled this, The Prophet Ezekiel, Could You Walk in His Shoes? The Prophet Ezekiel, Could You Walk in His Shoes? Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 2. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 2. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 1. Ezekiel, chapter 2. And your brother K. Judah, go pick it up at verse 1. And it reads, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day, even in our time. Verse 4, For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, and they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet should they know they have been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though bribes and thorns be with thee, and thou doest dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. And he talking about us, Israel. Verse 8, But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein, and he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. So do you see that God told Ezekiel, eat that I give thee. Did he actually eat the pages of a book? Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 3 and let's see. Ezekiel chapter 3. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 3. And your brother K. Judah going to pick it up at verse 1. And it reads, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thy finest, eat this roll, and go and speak unto the house of Israel. Oh, so he had to eat that book. He did not eat the pages of a book. He had to read the book, just like we have to do today. We have to eat these words, digest these words. Then once we have understanding, we have to go speak unto the people. Verse 2, so I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. So do you see that Ezekiel read what God gave him? Then once he had the understanding, he went and spoke unto the people. But the Bible said it was in his mouth for sweetness as honey. What did I read is that before? Let's go to Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10. Where else did I read this before? Revelation 10. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 1. Revelation chapter 10. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 1. This is Revelation 10 and verse 1. And it reads, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it was the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, 
and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth and cried with a loud voice and when the, as when a lion roared and when he had cried seven thunders uttered their voices jump down to verse 8 verse 8 and it reads and the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standing upon the sea and upon the earth and I went unto the angel and said unto him give me the little book and he said unto me take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up he also read the book just like Ezekiel and I ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey and as soon as I had eaten it my belly was bitter once you get the understanding of this book, Israel, it become bitter. Once you get the understanding of this book, Israel, it become bitter. Because you know exactly why our people are going through what we're going through. It's sweet in our mouth. Find out you Israel. you excited. You find out that you are the chosen of the Most High. you excited. But once you eat this word, digest this word, it should be in your mouth sweet as honey. But once it get in your belly, it become bitter. Because you know exactly why we going through what we going through. Understand this, family. Verse 11. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many people and nations and tongues and kings. So he did not eat the words. I mean, he did not eat the pages. He ate the words by reading the book, Israel. He did not eat the pages, but he read the book. That's how he ate the words, Israel. Understand this, family. Let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 3. And this time, verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 3. And this time, verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 3. And this time, verse 4. And it reads. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel, not too many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely, if I have sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee, but the house of Israel would not hearken unto thee, for they would not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Do you see? That God told Ezekiel, if I would have sent you to another people, they would have repented already. But I send you to the house of Israel, children that is hard-hearted. And that's us as a people family. That is us as a people family. Jump down to verse 9 verse 9 and it reads as an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead fear them not neither be dismayed at their looks though they be a rebellious house moreover he said unto me son of man all my words that I shall speak unto thee receive in thy heart and hear with thy ears and go get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them thus said the Lord God whether they will hear or whether they will forbear and that's how we have to be whether you will listen or not we gonna tell you what thus said the Lord understand this family let's go to Ezekiel chapter 4 Ezekiel chapter 4 and I'm gonna pick it up at verse 1 Ezekiel chapter 4 and I'm going to pick it up at verse 1 and let's look at some of the illustrations that God used Ezekiel for this is Ezekiel chapter 4 and verse 1 and it reads thou also son of man take thee a tower and lay it before thee and portray upon it the city even Jerusalem and lay siege against it 
and build a fourth against it, and cast a moan against it, set the camp also against it, and set battering rams against it, round about. Moreover, take thou unto thee an iron pan, and set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city, and set thy face against it, and it shall be besieged, and thou shalt lay siege against it. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Read that again. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Lie thou also upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon it. Thou shalt bear their iniquity, for I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of days, 390 days. So that's 390 years that our people were sinning and rebellious and hard-hearted against the Most High Yah. But he did not lay up on his side for he did not lay up on his side for 390 days in one day. It was over a period of time, Israel. But God said that he used Ezekiel, this illustration of the iniquity of the children of Israel, 390 days, equated to 390 years. So should thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. Verse 6, and when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah. Forty days have I appointed thee each day for a year. So do you see that God equate days with years? Where have we read this at before? Let's go to Numbers 14. Numbers 14. Ezekiel did not do this in one day. He did not lay up on his side 390 days in one day. Over a period of time, God used him to do this. Let's go to Numbers chapter 14. Out of the mouth of two or three, let it be established. Numbers 14. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 33. Numbers 14. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 33. This is the book of Numbers. Chapter 14. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 33. And I just want to use this as an example to show you that God equate days with years. Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 33. And it reads, And your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years. And bear your holders until your carcass be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which you search the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. So do you see that God equate days with years? So they searched the land for forty days. So God told them each day that you search the land will be a year that you will wander in this wilderness. So since they searched it for 40 days, he equated that to 40 years. The same thing with Ezekiel. 40 days lay upon thy right side, but it equated to 40 years. But we know he did not lay up on his side for no 40 years. 40 days it was, but it was over time, not in one day. Understand this, Israel. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 4. Back to Ezekiel chapter 4. And this time, I'm going to pick it up at verse 7. Ezekiel chapter 4. And this time, I'm going to pick it up at verse 7. Ezekiel chapter 4. And this time, verse 7. And it reads, Therefore, Thou shalt set thy face towards the siege of Jerusalem, and thy arm shall be uncovered, and thou shalt prophesy against it. And behold, I will lay bears upon thee, and thou shalt not turn thee from one side to another, till thou hast ended the days of thy siege. Take thou also unto thee wheat, and barley, and beans, and lentils, and millets, and fetches, and put them in one vessel, and make thee bread thereof according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon thy side. Three hundred and ninety days shall thou eat thereof. Thy meat 
which thou shalt eat shall be by weight. Twenty shekels a day from time to time shall thou eat it. Thou shalt drink also water by measure. Six parts of an hen from time to time shall thou drink it. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. And thou shalt bake it with dung. Hold up, read that again. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. And thou shalt bake it with dung that cometh out from man in their sight. Do you see that God asked Ezekiel to do some hard things, Israel? He told this man to bake his bread with men's dung. And we know what dung is. But let's see what Ezekiel told the Lord. Verse 13. And the Lord said, Even thus should the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether I would drive them. Then said I, Ha, Lord God, behold, my soul have not been polluted from my youth up even until now have I not eaten of that which died of itself or is torn in pieces. Neither came the abominable flesh into my mouth. Then he said unto me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. Could you do this? Could you do this, Israel? Could you walk in Ezekiel's shoes? Could you break your could you bake your bread with cows dung? Could you do it? Because this is an example of what we was gonna be eating in captivity. And many of our people did eat the intestines and cow guts and the slop. So God's word is true, family. His word is true. Verse, th verse, verse 16. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold. I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure, and would astonish me that they may want bread and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for dead nickel. And you can't tell me, Israel, we never have enough food. We never have enough water, and we are pining away, and we do look at one another, astounded at our, at our, at our condition. We look at one another astounded at our condition. You can't tell me we don't, family. Understand this. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 5. Ezekiel chapter 5. Could you walk in his shoes? Ezekiel chapter 5. And let's see some more illustrations. Ezekiel chapter 5. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 1. And it reads, And thou, son of man, Take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thy head and upon thy beard. Then take thee bandages to wait, and divide the hair. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city, when the days of the siege are fulfilled. And thou shalt take a third part, and smite about it with a knife. And a third part thou shalt scatter in the wind, and I will draw the sword after them. Hold up, listen, family. God is telling Ezekiel this illustration. Cut your hair and divide it in three parts. Let's see what this represents. Verse 3. Thou shalt also take the of a few in number and bind them in thy skirts. Then take of them again and cast them in the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire. For thereof shall fire come forth into all the house of Israel. Thus said the Lord God, This is Jerusalem. I have set in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. Do you see? That represented Jerusalem. That illustration represented what God was about to do to Jerusalem. Let's get the understanding. Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. And let's get the understanding of the illustration. Verse 11. And it reads, Wherefore, as I live, said the Lord God, Surely, because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things and with all thy abominations, therefore I will also diminish thee. Neither shall my eyes spare, neither will I have any pity. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence and with famine, should they be consumed in the midst of thee. And a third part shall fall by the swarm, round about thee, and I will scatter a third part into all the wind. And that's us, Israel. The same thing in Deuteronomy chapter 28. 
when he told them, I'm going to scatter you to the winds. He telling Ezekiel what he was going to do in the future. And it happened, family. It happened just as God prophesied it. Understand what you're hearing, Israel. Let me read verse 12 again. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence and with famine. Should they be consumed in the midst of thee? And a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee. And I will scatter a third part of thee into all the wind. And I will draw out a sword after thee. Thus shall my anger be accomplished. And I will cause my fury to rest upon thee. And I will be comforted. And they should know that I the Lord have spoken in my zeal. When I have accomplished my fury in them. Moreover, I will make thee waste a reproach among the nations. Read that again, K. Judah. Moreover, I will make thee waste and a reproach among the nations that are wrong about thee in the sight of all that pass by. And you cannot tell me that we are not waste. You cannot tell me that we are not waste. Look at where we live at, Israel. Look at where we live at, family. Look at the food we eat. Look at the water we drink. We are waste. Understand this, family. Let's go to Ezekiel. 24. Let's go to Ezekiel 24. The book of Ezekiel chapter 24. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 15. Ezekiel 24. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 15. Ezekiel 24. And your brother K. Judah going to pick it up at verse 15. 15. And it reads, Also the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thy eyes with a stroke. Yet neither shall thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. God is finna take away this man's wife to use as an illustration of what he gonna do to Jerusalem. Understand this, Israel. Could you walk in this prophet's shoes? Could you walk in Ezekiel's shoes? That's the question. Verse 15 again. Also, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thy eyes with a stroke. Yet neither shall thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. For bad to cry, make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire of thy head upon thee, and put, up, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet. And cover thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. So I spake unto the people in the morning, and ate. At, so I spake unto the people in the morning, and at evening my wife died, and I did in the morning as I was commanded. And the people said unto me, Will thou not tell us what these things are to us, that thou doest so? Then I answered them, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Speak unto the house of Israel. Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the excellency of your strength, the desire of your eyes, and that which your soul pity, and your sons and your daughters, whom you have left, shall fall by the sword, and ye shall do as I have done. Ye shall not cover your lips, nor eat the bread of me, and your attire shall be upon your heads, and your shoes upon your feet, and ye shall not mourn nor weep, but ye shall pine away for your iniquity. And mourn one toward another. Thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign. Read that again. Thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign. Read that again. Thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign. You always want a sign. He'll go a sign for you, Israel. According to all that he have done, shall ye do. And when this cometh, ye should know that I am the Lord God. Also, thou son of man, should it not be in the day? When I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that which upon they set their minds, their sons and their daughters, that he that escaped in that day shall come unto thee to cause thee to hear it with thy ears. In that day should thy mouth be open to them which is escaped, and thou shalt speak, and be no more dumb, and thou shalt be a sign unto them. And they should know that I am the Lord. So do you see that God used Ezekiel for signs? God used Ezekiel for illustrations. 
Understand what you're hearing, Israel. Let's go to 1 Samuel 15. Could you walk in his shoes, Israel? 1 Samuel 15. That's why I say it's better to obey than sacrifice. He did not complain. He did everything the Lord told him to do. He did not complain, Israel. This prophet did everything the Lord bade him to do. 1 Samuel chapter 15. And I'm going to read verse 22. 1 Samuel chapter 15. And your brother K. Judah going to read verse 22. 1 Samuel 15 and 22. And it reads, And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt off and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to hawk it than the fat of rams. So Ezekiel obeyed. He did not complain. He did not whine. He did not mum. He obeyed God and did every, everything the Lord asked his prophet to do. Why? Because your God is a terrible God, Israel. And it's better to obey than sacrifice. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 1. Nehemiah chapter 1. And I'm going to read verse 5. Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 1. And I'm going to read verse 5. This is Nehemiah chapter 1. And I'm going to read verse 5. And it reads, And say, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God. Read that again. The great and terrible God. This is why it is better to obey. Because our God is the great and terrible God that keep it covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let's go to Daniel 9 and 4. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 4. The book of Daniel chapter 9. And I'm going to read verse 4. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 4. And it reads, And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confessions. And say, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. Let's go to Psalm 66. So do you see that your God is terrible and dreadful? Understand this, Israel. Psalm 66. The book of Psalms 66. And I'm going to pick it up at verse 3. Psalm 66 and verse 3. And it reads, Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy works! Through the greatness of thy power should thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. Do you see that God is terrible, Israel? And it would behoove you to obey. God is terrible, Israel. And it would behoove you to obey. Let's go to the last place. Psalms 47. Psalms 47. And I'm going to read one verse. Verse 2. Psalms 47. And I'm going to read one verse. Verse 2. And it reads. For the Lord Most High is terrible. Read it again, K. Judah. For the Lord Most High is terrible, sweet to my lips. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. And your brother K. Judah want to say shalom.